Good day all. Have another uh, video here um, with the next stage of repair on my 1974 F350 Super Campus Special. Um, I've, I have a couple of videos posted already of uh, when I initiated this project of uh, getting this thing out of the field it was sitting in for the last 18 years and getting ready to get her back on the road. So this stage here, I have, um, I did <clears throat> a high pressure power steering line and I had to retake the, uh, um, I had a brand new master cylinder on there and then I went and looked and a bunch of lines blew. So I said, frigate, I'm gonna just go ahead and run all new lines and uh, not bother trying to chase them. So, but anyways, the first part of this stage is uh, I replaced that one high pressure line, as you can see. And uh, like I said, I, I took the uh, master back out uh, so I could access the, uh, I don't know, you can't really see it in there, but let's see if I can get over there. Yeah, I went in between, so but what you can't really see it. I can't really get it in there. I don't have enough light right now. But anyways, um, that high pressure line, what I did was I ended up snapping it off down by where the uh, where it threads into the box. So um, I ended up putting uh, a deep half-inch drive. Was it half-inch I used? Yeah, deep half-inch drive socket, jammed it on there so I could... I wasn't going to try to get it with a fitting wrench or an open end wrench. It's silly. So I, I broke the line off so I could be able to get it very easily. And then all I had to do is three quarter nut there on the back side of the pump. Good to go. And actually, anybody who wants to know, I actually um, found it. Rock Auto had it. And that's, uh, that's the number that they use, the 91574 for that high pressure line. I couldn't find the... Uh, the return line so i'm gonna just have to see about trying to make one up fortunately there's not a lot of pressure there so hopefully i can uh do something with that <clears throat> so then the next step was there i uh i had removed all the i jacked it up and removed all the all the all the tires i actually had a little bit of a problem it was when i first started this i was like oh you know, i went to go loosen them up and they weren't coming off that easy and i'm like Whoa, wait a minute, I remember some of the early models and stuff had left-hand threads. So I went and looked and I'm like, oh, no, these aren't lefty. So I got that front tire and I uh, was able to loosen these two and get them off. And then when I was going to do this last one, I figured out, because this one was a little bit tough, I was like, oh. So I started putting some heat on it. And started turning it and I said you know what why don't I back it off you know I mean tighten it so I can um and then try to go back and loosen it so when I was going back I'm like oh it was coming off I'm like holy smokes this one left rear which I didn't realize the Dana rear ends um so me when I started doing the first tire I, I assumed, I figured it was lefty and it wasn't. And um, so when I came to do this one, I uh, found out that they were left-hand thread. And, which I should have known to look to, is on, see there's a little L right there. So you folks who get involved with any of these, so if you have one with the Dana differential, um, look on the lugs on the back and if there's a little L you know what the deal is so anyways I was like oh I thought I was gonna be breaking studs but didn't happen so <clears throat> here I am and I said go ahead and initiate taking the brake lines off so that's what I did today I, I started disassembling the brake lines and getting ready to do that so what I did here in the rear is uh, <sighs> I already took the lines off. There they are over there. There's one, the small one. Oh, there they are. They're both together right there. You can just see them. But what I did was I cut the lines because I wasn't, once again, wasn't going to try to put a fitting wrench on those things. So I cut the line and, hand, well, it took a six-point socket, 3 h drive. I put a little bit of heat to it, 
um, and then I worked it very slowly and they end up coming out very easily. So I was able to get both sides done. There's the other one. See, I got the thing out and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bend the line. So I already got the new rubber line up in there. It was actually a pretty decent one. I got them through Napa and I'll go ahead and, matter of fact, I'll go and show the, the numbers for those now. So I'm to the point now, I just, Got that rub the, the flexible line there on the differential, and I took apart those rear lines, and I'm going to go ahead and make some up. I tried to buy them through inline to inline tubing, yeah, and but they didn't make it for my particular truck. So what I did was didn't want to do it, but because I was just like I just I can bend them, but I just I just really didn't want to do it. But so I bought a roll of three sixteenths twenty five line. Uh, we'll make this stuff. We got it at uh, Advanced Auto. Cost me like 18 bucks or 20 bucks, I think it was. Yeah, $20 for the 25. The, it's the steel coated uh, steel line with the coating on them, which I did a, another truck that I had of 66 Econoline that I did complete everything. Lines, I went through everything. Drums, wheel cylinders, brake pads, everything. Anyway, so... I ended up doing that, so I was very happy with how that bent and how it flared. So here are the flexible lines, if anybody is looking. The one there on the left is for the rear. See, they're both, they're all Napa numbers. And so the rear brake hose, 36753 for you guys with these trucks here. And here are the two front ones, 36786, 36787. Those are left and right. So I ended up getting those. Those were, the rear one was like 60 something dollars and, and the left side was 53 and the uh, right side was like $32. But they didn't have those two in stock. So um, they actually had to have them, they actually had them made and I actually had to pay for the, for the shipping because they weren't uh, in one of the stores. But anyway, so that's where I'm at with that. So. Oh, and actually, for anybody that does buy these, they don't come with the horseshoe clips. So I went and had to buy some separate ones. So just to let you know, if you go and do them, you're going to, unless, you know, you can save your old ones, but nine times out of ten, they just disintegrate. But these are what I bought. I just bought some. It cost me like $2.80 for the three of them. And that was it. So, yeah, that was for the power steering and stuff, but. So this is where I'm at. Um, I'm going to initiate bending these rear lines from, um, from the left to right here on the rear diff. And then I'll go ahead and run another line midship here from the top of the... I don't know if you can see it in here. Maybe I can get it this side here. Let's see here. Uh, move some of this crap all out of the way. Yeah, here we are in here. Oops, let's see if I can get up in here and get some light. There we go. So up in there. So there she is. I just got to get the clip for that. And there's the line in there. And it actually, the breather for the, for the rear diff is actually, yeah, for the rear diff. There was a, uh, just had to unthread this here. Let's see if I can see it. Yeah, there we go. And uh, there it is right there. That's unthread and it comes right with the clamp and it was beautiful. I was able to put that up in there. So that's where I'm at at this moment. Getting ready to finish up the, getting these lines all taken care of. And go ahead and replace these front ones too, obviously as they, already shown but yeah it's better off than trying to salvage these but there we are we'll be initiating the rest of this well not initiating but finishing it up um in the not too distant future here oh. anyways that's all i got to say and uh good hopefully i get this bad boy back on the road 
fairly soon. Yeah, and just, uh, I worked on the wiring a little bit. The, I got all the directionals working. Though, on the back here, the running light cancels out after I, when I go to put the right hand directional on, it cancels out the running light here. And I noticed only one of the elements was lighting up, so, because when the running lights are on, that other secondary one on the 1167 there, there's the two filaments, one of them stays off in the running light and the other one is, you know, will flash with the brake light. But, uh, anyhow, that's all I got to say. And, uh, here we go. So, have a good day, everyone, and thanks for listening.